I'm Scott L. Miller. It is the 17th of March, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, we are heading out to go to see a concert uh, of Med Heavier at Via Via tonight. It is a busy day of work all day. And we have an interesting topic of why is it that people actually want to live in Nicaragua? We're gonna get to that right after the bump. <laughs> love this sun coming through the palm trees. This is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm still avoiding doing some long walks. My foot is feeling much, much better. For those who watch my show religiously, you know that I broke my foot uh, about 10 months ago now. Wow, it's been a long time. Sorry for the shade. This is going to change in a second. I'm walking over all the uh, cashews. And uh, so I did a lot of damage to my foot uh, 10 months ago. It's, it's feeling much better. I'm feeling quite good about it, in fact, um, but that's dangerous because that's when I'm gonna go out and hurt myself. So I'm trying to, to keep any uh, uh, pressure on it to a minimum and we'll get there. So maybe this week I'll get out and do some walking, but really I barely notice problems with the foot anymore. So that makes me cautious that I may go out and push it really hard. I need to, I need to baby it for quite some time. I still have at least eight weeks to go before I'm allowed to do anything more than five kilometers. All right, so uh, we'll get to the top, like the, the what we did today. I'm gonna start right into the topic. So someone from my own team said, but we're doing all this stuff with, with, with preparing to help people to, to move to Nicaragua, but do people really want to move to Nicaragua? Why are they looking to go there? And, and not because they think Nicaragua is bad, but because there's so many other great things in the region that people who are looking at Central America and its immediate neighbors, principally Belize, which is part of Central America, Mexico, which sometimes little pieces of Mexico are technically Central America, but the vast majority is North America, and Panama, which is generally considered a border zone, culturally South America, is never considered part of Central America, but it is the Isthmus. So that region, there's so many amazing options and all of them are good for real right there there are people for whom costa rica is certainly the right choice people for whom mexico is the right choice if you really want english belize is probably going to be your right choice uh panama has so much to offer personally guatemala is absolutely fantastic honduras and el salvador are among the least likely to be uh, desired within the region, and both of them have amazing things to offer. Really, everybody in this region has uh, a real reason to be considered by somebody, and, and in some cases by everybody, right? Like, they, they all should be kind of be within your, your pool of thinking if you're looking for something that's relatively close to North America, is, is affordable, is whatever, like, the, the, it's an amazing region. And lots of parts of the world are amazing and, and also have lots of great options. So I'm not trying to say that they're not, that this is such a standout, but I really think, you know, I live here for a reason, Central America. It's amazing. But given so many strong, accessible, affordable, for the most part, options nearby that share in many cases, the weather, the culture, the accessibility, what would put Nicaragua onto your map and what puts it onto my map? I chose having lived in some of those places, having visited many of those places, having been to many more since living here, what makes me choose Nicaragua? What maybe chose it originally? Uh, what makes me continue to want to be in Nicaragua? And what will probably make it important for you? Let's talk. So one, one of the number one things that's gonna drive people to consider Nicaragua is of course, this is the 800 pound gorilla, is the cost pretty much nothing in the region is going to beat Nicaragua on price. And in many cases, they won't come close. Uh, Mexico has some of the most affordable in the region. Um, you can get pretty affordable in Honduras and El Salvador. Guatemala is not bad, it's a little bit more, um, but like Costa Rica and Panama, they're gonna step up a lot. Areas of Mexico that you normally think about as, as top contenders, they're gonna step up a lot. So. You can get comparable to Nicaragua, but Nicaragua across the board has outrageously good prices. So that's the first thing. Coming to Nicaragua, your money is just going to go farther. And it's not just that you can find an affordable apartment, right? In most of those countries, you can find an affordable apartment. I lived in, in Panama. 
And if you're working at it, you can find some very affordable parts of Panama, even though it's one of the more expensive countries in the region. However, if you want to leave your apartment and go out and do more things afield, your prices still go up. Restaurants are more expensive. Driving is more expensive. Uh, staying in hotels is more expensive. All those things get pricier. Uh, the one thing that, that tends to get cheaper is flights. Uh, but other than that, everything is going to be more expensive in just everyday life. So that adds up. Even if you found a uh, comparable apartment, say you're going to spend $400 in Nicaragua, you're going to spend $400 in Panama, and, and you just manage to get a great deal where they're both great apartments that you would love, and then you simply have to choose which one your overall life in Nicaragua is going to be much cheaper. Just the everyday getting groceries, eating food, taking public transportation, doing all those things, uh, hiring staff, whatever. Panama is affordable. It's a wonderful country, but Nicaragua is going to beat it in price just overall, no matter what. The second big item, and this one's almost as important as the first, is safety. Now this is one everybody knows that Nicaragua is really cheap. That's not a surprise. You don't talk to people in the United States who have no idea about Nicaragua and say, well, you know, Nicaragua is affordable. And they never say, really? I, I had no idea, right? They may say, I'm not sure where Nicaragua is. You get that a lot. But outside of that, you're never going to get someone who's surprised that it's affordable. So while that's the number one item, then it just, that's what drives people into this region. Um, it's it's not going to it's not going to be something you have to you have to really educate people on. That it's the cheapest you might right because people are like ah but Mexico's so cheap ah but you know I thought Costa Rica was cheap no 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 this is cheaper but we are in abject shock every time we go to Costa Rica every little thing costs so much more I mean so much more a breakfast that would cost eight to maybe ten dollars here in Nicaragua eighty dollars not even in the city. In Costa Rica, in a small town closer to Nicaragua, $80. To an American, that's like, oh, $80 for, for a good breakfast? No, that's not bad. But to a Nicaraguan, it's like, I've never heard of such a thing. How could you possibly have it be that expensive? Right? Completely different worlds. So Costa Rica, very expensive compared to here. The big thing that people don't expect in Nicaragua is safety. This is so far and away the safest country in the region. And not just the safest country in this region, the safest country in all bordering regions, right? Here in Central America and its immediate neighbors, right, as we kind of, the, the general Central America zone, including Panama and Mexico, Nicaragua is the safest. But when we also include North America, sometimes Canada is safer, sometimes it's not. They go back and forth. Nowhere in South America is safer. So in this entire Western Hemisphere, only Canada's in competition with Nicaragua for safety. That's extreme, right? That is a lot of safety. It doesn't matter. Oh, well, I'm from a safe part of the US. It doesn't matter. This is safer, right? It's moving to a place that costs very little and is extremely safe is not a common combination. Typically, when you move to really low cost locations, that comes with a lot of risk. And to be clear, there is always risk being very rich or very affluent in a place where no one else is you're going to be somewhat of a target compared to other people. So that's never going to change. The ability to afford just about anything means that people who don't have that would like to have that. So that's real, but that's not a major concern. That's not like a thing you go around worrying about living in Nicaragua. It's just that it does exist as a potential risk, but overall the safety here is so extremely high that that alone is a major factor, major, for driving people to consider Nicaragua. Once you know how cheap and safe it is, it becomes challenging to really come up with driving factors to look at other places. Even though other places have some amazing variety and things of their own, and there's many places I would love to live, uh, it, it's, it's really, really difficult in the pros and cons list to find things that significantly outweigh those two. So because of how cheap it is, because of how safe it is, that alone explains why any number of people are driven to come to Nicaragua. Okay, so it's safe, so it's cheap, great. But why are you really going to be passionate? What's really gonna make you get excited about coming to Nicaragua? Well, it's different for every person. Those first two things, cheap and safe, apply to everybody. There's really no one who goes, you know what, I'd like to spend more for no reason, or I'd like to be dangerous for no reason. Once in a while you get people who wanna be dangerous just because it's exciting or something, but in general, 
people want to be safe and they want to live cheaply if all other things are good. So does Nicaragua have negatives? Of course it does, right? We have a lot of trash. We have a certain lack of resources. We don't have the variety of restaurants that you'll get in other regions. Costa Rica has way better restaurants in many cases, right? We may have higher quality food, but we have a very low variety of it. What little bit we have is extremely good, but Costa Rica has a huge variety. When I want to go to an Indian restaurant, I drive to Costa Rica. I'm planning on doing that in a few weeks. I'm really excited about going out for Indian dinner. We do it once a quarter, right? Or a little bit less, one, half, between a quarter and half a year. We go out and get a bunch of Indian food in Costa Rica and we love it, right? It's also super expensive. Not American expensive, but still pretty expensive. Um, so, so there are negatives. And these are the things that drive people away from Nicaragua, right? We have bad traffic. It's the roads are kind of hectic. Um, things are poor. And there are just natural things that come with poverty that are not ideal. You often, you know, you don't get the luxury living that you're going to get on like the Mexican coast or the Ecuadorian coast or the Panamanian coast. But those things come at a price. You have to pay for that. If you're going to spend that same kind of money here, you could get something really amazing. You're not going to be in huge enclaves. You're not going to be in huge coastal regions where it's just one luxury thing after another. And that's beautiful, right? I lived in Rio Ato, Panama, and it was absolutely stunning. I was surrounded by the amazingly large saltwater lagoons and beautiful Pacific Ocean and tons of high rises. And those are not things you're going to get here in Nicaragua. If that's what you're looking for, this will be a poor choice for you. If you're looking for cold weather, cold being like like very spring-like weather, 60 degrees, and you can wear a jacket and jeans and go out, and it's just really, really beautiful, and you never get sweaty, and it's if that's what you're looking for, Nicaragua's probably not your place. Guatemala is going to be really good for that. Mexico is going to be really good for that if that's a priority. If you're looking for heat, Nicaragua is pretty much unbeatable. We're the warmest country in the region. Most people are not actually looking for that. It sounds good when you're going on vacation. Wow, it's gonna be 90 degrees, I can't wait. I'm so tired of snow, but when it's 95 degrees, it's 95 right now as I'm recording this. If it's 95 every day of the year, that starts to sound like, ooh, that's a bit much. Oh, that's a negative, right? Now this is Leon, this is the hottest of the cities and I'm wearing a thick cap, right? And I've got a heavy kind of t-shirt on, like I'm, it's really not bad because you get used to it, but you have to be here a while to get used to it. I would say that the temperature is a negative, but it is beautiful year round. Look at these palm trees, right? This is, I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere and it's absolutely gorgeous palms all over. This is stuff that you come for. This is one of the, I'm just in a parking lot. And this is, this is one of the great places to come because it's so beautiful. There's so much open space. There's so much opportunity to do things. The flexibility and freedom of Nicaragua are huge factors that people often overlook. They have no idea. They think, well, Nicaragua is probably really limiting, right? Because I don't know. I just assume that it is. If, if it was so free and awesome, wouldn't everyone move there? Well, they would. That's probably why people don't talk about it, because if everyone talked about it, everyone would come here pretty much, right? It's uh, uh, the lack of resources. It's true. Um, if I... Uh, if I go to places like Mexico, if I go to places like Panama, just going down the highway, there's so many things to do. There's so many attractions, so many restaurants, so many things to see, so many beautiful high rises, so much. There's so much, right? Um, and that is fantastic. And I love those places for those reasons. And I love visiting for those reasons. I love all the things that they have to do and big countries with lots to do, right? Nicaragua is a relatively small country as is everyone in this region. So the number of things that we have is simply pretty limited and it's a small culture. If you're looking for a giant culture with the things that come with that, then Mexico is probably your best bet. Guatemala is a decent option, right? Big cities, a variety of cities, you know, when you have those really big resources, you start getting things like lots of museums and opera and uh, just all these really cool things and like quirky cafes. And not that we have none of that, but we're not a country big enough to have an opera, right? And we're not, um, our, our art galleries are few and far between. We do have them. I can walk to one from here and it's, it's really good, but it's the exception, not the rule. We just don't have a lot of resources because we don't have a lot of people. There aren't that, you know, if you're going to put an opera in a city, generally the city's going to be pretty large and it requires a certain amount of money and there just isn't that pool of people in Nicaragua to, to put up an opera. There is a beautiful opera house in Costa Rica. I don't know how often that they have shows. I need to look into that because I really want to do the opera in Costa Rica. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, but there's a balance. So there's an absolute reason why lots of people won't consider Nicaragua or, or maybe should consider it, but end up not choosing it, 
right? I can absolutely see a lot of people who are really seriously looking for a great place to live coming to Nicaragua and saying, I love so much about it, but the heat, it's going to get to me. Or I just, I want more things. I want different kinds of things to do. Great. Then, you know, Mexico, Guatemala, Panama, Costa Rica, they all have things that may be a different balance. All these countries have slightly different balance with a lot of the same core qualities, right? Um, and that's, that's great. But I think even those people will normally come to Nicaragua and go, wow, this is, this is a lot better than I was expecting. It has a lot of really special stuff to offer. And uh, living here, you know, the people are so great. And the food is such high quality. And if you, if you take the time to learn how to do things, there's so much that you can do, so many fun activities, so much going out, so much nightlife, uh, so easy to get health care. Um, you know, some people have specialty health care needs and things are just not going to necessarily be the right balance for you here, right? I've got someone I'm talking to who's very interested. He's coming down to check it out from the channel. Hey, um, but he has some specialty medical needs. So one of his first evaluations is going to be coming to Managua and seeing if Managua is able to handle what he needs. From an emergency standpoint, yeah, they can. But from an ongoing care perspective, maybe they can, maybe they can't. That's something that has to be determined. And so we're going to look into that. And if it's not here, then we need to figure out which hospitals in the region have the right resources and, and look further afield, which easily is going to be a Mexico, easily going to be a Guatemala, or in El Salvador. El Salvador has some healthcare advantages over other countries in the region, so they may end up being the pick. There's a lot of balancing in all of this. It makes it makes it fun, makes it interesting and dynamic. But I think Nicaragua really has one of the strongest balances. Um, I think if you were to bring a thousand people down and bring them to all the countries in the region, um, I think that your number one is generally going to be Mexico. More people are going to pick Mexico than anywhere else. It simply has so much more to offer. It's really cheating because it's bigger than the rest of the, the region combined. So if it didn't get the majority of people, that would be pretty surprising. Uh, Guatemala will compete really strongly for second place. But if Guatemala doesn't strongly end up winning second place, then Nicaragua will possibly take it. But if not, will almost certainly come in third. I think that, um, and I don't mean this as a negative to Costa Rica, but I think the majority of people who go to Costa Rica only go there because they didn't shop around, right? Costa Rica is fantastic. I love going there. Sorry to everyone in Costa Rica that it's not the, the highest pick. And I'm not saying that a lot of people wouldn't end up choosing Costa Rica if they, if they did test everything. What I'm saying is that the majority of people who do pick Costa Rica, when you talk to them, you say, oh, why did you pick Costa Rica? They go, well, is there something else? You're like, are you kidding me? Right? And if you bring them to Nicaragua, bring them to Panama, a lot of them will be like, oh, oh, I just, I just picked the default choice and didn't even shop around. That's where Costa Rica has kind of fallen. They've become the default choice for people who aren't evaluating their needs. Some people evaluate their needs and love it. Rick, who watches the show, hey, Rick, he watches every episode. He has been to both and chose Costa Rica. I think it's a close thing. He's like, Nicaragua's fantastic, but he prefers Costa Rica. That's going to happen, right? Some people like the architecture more. Some people like the weather more. Some people like that there's more things. Some people like that there's Indian food, right? Um, but, but a lot of people are there and are just, but I never looked at anything else. And that's, that's a bad place, right? And that, that itself makes for some, some negatives uh, on its own. Part of the reason that I think a lot of people would choose Mexico, plus Panama, Guatemala, and those places, is that they have a few of the things that a lot of expats are looking for. One is enclaves, one is high rises and modern resources, uh, one is large cities. All of those things are generally missing here in Nicaragua. We do have some enclaves, they're very small. We don't really have high rises, we don't have big cities. Managua is a medium sized city, it's not a big city. There's no, there's no claiming that it is. The people who are going to choose Nicaragua are generally choosing it for a slightly different lifestyle. And the people that I know that are here that have chosen it are generally of the mind that they would never seriously consider something else. They love it. Now, of course, anywhere you go, the people who are there put in some time, chose it, love it, and that's why they're there in the first place. So that's not very surprising. But it really does not uh, tend to be a region where you get people who didn't shop around. Every person you run into is like, well, I've been to 40, 50, 60 countries, right? I'm on the low side for, for people here being in the, in the mid thirties. And, and now I've lived a lot of places, which is I'm on the high side for where I've lived and on the low side for where I visited. Um, but, uh, 
uh, people really do put in a lot of research and end up in Nicaragua. And when they get here, they're like, wow, it's such a leap beyond what I was expecting. It's so good that, and, and it's just all the pieces coming together, the stable weather, the low crime, the incredible affordability. And that, that goes a long way. It's hard to really picture just how important it is that you can afford anything all the time, right? It's not just, oh, my, my apartment doesn't hurt so much to pay for every month. No, no, no. It's, I can go out to eat every meal. I can hire staff to do things for me. Anytime that I'm stressed out in another country and I don't know what to do in Nicaragua, I could just hire someone to make it go away. Uh, meaning, oh, like we had problems with food during the day and shopping at the grocery store. We didn't have time for it because we work. If we were retired or that was all we were doing, it would be no problem at all. But some of those things were a challenge. Well, we just hired people to do them. When we need maintenance done, we don't do it ourselves. We hire a maintenance guy. All those things are really simple because it's so affordable. Because we're in Nicaragua, it makes all those things moot points. Life is very simple because of it. And those little things, the fact that you can make life so easy, the fact that you can definitely, on almost anyone coming to Nicaragua has options. Like, I want to live in a city, no problem. I want an apartment or a house. I want to own. I want to rent. I want to be on a beach. I want to be, I want to have a farm. I want to be in the mountains. I want to be in a remote area away from everyone. I want to be in an enclave near people. All of those things exist and all of them are within easy financial grasp. Maybe you can't do all of them, but any one of them, if you're looking for a place to live, you have, the sky's the limit. When I'm in the United States, that's very different. Or even in Mexico, when you start saying, well, I could live in some rural community for sure, but I want to live in the capital. I want to be in Mexico City. Ugh. I mean, you can, but wow, you have to be, it's really difficult to be affordable in that. Or same thing with Panama City, right? The prices are high, not outrageous, but they're high. And that makes it very difficult to do just anything you want. But in, in Nicaragua, there isn't a spot where you end up with really high prices. There's more expensive and less expensive. There's never outrageously expensive. It just doesn't come up. So uh, it's hard sometimes to really explain why uh, Nicaragua is the place that we would choose, but it really does have this mix um, that I'm not saying it's the, it's the place for everyone. I'm not saying it should be your first choice for the average person, maybe the average person watching the show because you've already kind of selected and you're already liking what you're seeing. But, but for just people who are looking at Latin America in general, I don't think Nicaragua is going to be the mix for the average person. But I think it's a really good shortlist item for almost everyone. As long as you can handle the heat, and I think a lot more people could handle the heat than believe they can, you ha like if you'd asked me before I'd really spent time in hot countries and said, it's gonna be 95 like every day, I'd be like, there's no way, right? I'll be in air conditioning all the time, it'll be terrible. Now I live here, I don't even need my windows open half the time. I don't run a fan during the day. I definitely don't have air conditioning on. I'm not doing anything in particular to stay cool other than keeping an ice water with me. And uh, that's it. And I'm, I'm generally comfortable throughout the day. I mean, the windows open most days, like that's it. Like just a breeze, 95 degrees. And as long as I'm not in the sun, no problem. It's amazingly comfortable. It took a while to get used to it, but you really do adapt in a way that you can't test coming from the United States. You have to be in a place like this and have that stable temperature year round. And you can be like, oh, it really does change. So I encourage you to think about Nicaragua in a different way and, and really think of it without all this American and Canadian context that they layer on. It is not the country that they present. It has this amazing mix of things that's well worth considering. The other part of that was, uh, and what brought it up as we were talking about um, helping people find housing in uh, very Nicaraguan-like living. Um, and I'd be really interested to get some feedback from you guys on the channel. So I know this has been a little bit long. All of you who are still here, please get down in the comments. Most people who come and are looking for housing, they're looking for things in the city centers, like interesting, cool, fancy apartments like Casa Mango. Um, they're looking for something on the beach. Uh, they might be looking for something like a farm, but they're, lo they're looking for generally upscale or really interesting places. Um, and, and places that just expats tend to congregate, not, ne not necessarily around other expats, right? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there's a certain type of housing where expats tend to go, right? And it's uh, city centers and it's fancier. And what I think would be really interesting, and I think for, that for me, right, I live in the barrio, and for the last year I lived in the barrio, and uh, uh, from La Borio and I moved to Sutiava, 
But living in the barrio, I find that life is so much more interesting. It gives me a chance to much more easily integrate with Nicaraguan society. I am much more likely to hang out with Nicaraguans. I'm much more likely to do Nicaraguan things. I'm much more likely to leverage life in the way that makes sense in Nicaragua. Like I live outside much more. I'm much more likely to go for a walk. I just, I, I've separated myself from, from expat commonalities, I feel a bit more than I would if I lived in like the city center and was constantly around other people who were speaking English and were, were looking for, for expat activities or whatever. And not that I don't run into them almost every day, but there really is something about living in the barrio and your home being part of a, a different kind of community. And what I'm interested in is knowing, I know that the majority of people, that's not what they're looking for, right? I just, I accept that. The same way, the majority of people looking to move to a country are gonna, you know, Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala, those are the big four. They're gonna dominate. Uh, the most of where people end up going. I'm not saying if you evaluate it everywhere that those are the ones you'd pick. I'm saying those, those are going to suck people in because it's what they know, it's what they've seen, it's what they, their, their mindset is stuck on. That's fine. They're great places, all of them. Um, but in the same way, people coming to Nicaragua are going to be like, ah, you know, flashy apartment in the city, gated community uh, in, in some enclave, San Juan del Sur, like all these places are a bit apart. Maybe not totally, but a little bit. But what if there was a, a kind of managed context, a way to come down and get a fairly easy uh, introduction to living in the barrios, living in the suburbs, living in places where, this is gonna sound, what does this mean? But real Nicaraguans, I think most of you know what I mean. Working class, mid, mid uh, income, middle income, working class Nicaraguans who are paying mortgages and living in, in normal communities and sit out on their driveways, uh, having beers at night, whether it's uh, in the barrios in one of the big cities or in the suburbs of Managua uh, or out in Didiamba or up in the mountains, like really experience normal Nicaraguan life, not poverty Nicaraguan life, not baller rich Nicaraguan life, but live in a reasonable way um, and not necessarily permanently, right? I'm talking about what if there were apartments or something that made it relatively easy to get furnished places with internet in safe places, um, but where when you go out, you're not around expats, you're not around foreigners, you're just around Nicaraguans uh, who are, you know, this is the, the lifestyle that they're uh, wanting to live. Um, and uh, I've shown some of those places, right? I do the walks in in Veracruz here, which is only, which is on the upside, right? That, that's on the higher side of this. Uh, I do the ones in Ciudad Sandino, like that's kind of perfect, like very, very affordable. Um, and for, it, it may be that it's just something you wanna learn about, right? You wanna come and spend a few months living uh, like a Nicaraguan and get that experience. For me, that sounds fantastic. I would love to be able to move around and live in different, you know, real bedroom communities of Nicaragua and, and get a feel for what real life is like here rather than uh, something catering to, to expats uh, um, and, and do so in an affordable, safe, managed way uh, so that it's not being thrown to the wolves and trying to figure it out on your own. Because if you, if you could do that, you'd already have the experience, right? Um, and uh, uh, that just seems like a really cool thing to me. I wanna know what you guys think. Is that, give me some ideas. I want some feedback. Is that sound exciting? Is that sound interesting? Um, is that something that people would want? Uh, because to me, it sounds really neat, right? Small, conservative, and then maybe that you decide that's something you wanna do. You wanna live that way permanently, or it's just a sampling to, to learn some Nicaraguan culture, and then you move on. Then maybe you move to an enclave. Maybe you get a baller house and, and spend all the money, whatever. Um, but uh, I think it's a cool idea. And I'm really interested in your feedback. Seriously long, over, way too long video today. Sorry, I meant to be, keep this really short and it just somehow spiraled out of control. So, sorry. That was the day. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Post this on social media. Put it on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram and, and uh, Reddit. Get out there, share it with people, put it in the, the expat groups, uh, people who are traveling, lo relocating, looking for stuff. But get in those comments, get in the conversation. I want to hear from you, whether it's about the stuff today or something else. I definitely want to hear your feelings about uh, some, some projects with living and like real Nicaraguan living. Very conservative, very cool neighborhoods, very off the beaten path in a way that you're in with Nicaraguan culture, but not around foreigners. I think it's interesting, and I think the conversation about it's gonna be good. I think we'll do a few videos and talk about it. And uh, that's it, like and subscribe. I will see all of you tomorrow.